we're going as a church. And it will give you a little bit of an insight into who we are and where we've been so far and where we're going and what's happening next. But, man, we're, uh, we're pumped for it. And we're going to share, first of all, we just want to share from John 15, this verse. And um, if I can get my clicker working, here we go, Josh. Come on, you've got the, you've got this. Uh, John 15, verse five. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump into a bit of John 15 through this, uh, this today. But I just want to share this verse, f- uh, verse. First of all, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So this is Jesus. He's talking to the disciples. It's the night before he goes to the cross, and he's just sharing this really important teaching with them, but it's relevant to us today. And what I want to say to us, church, here, for for anyone that you may be passing through, visiting from somewhere, you may, this is your church family, maybe you're here just kind of looking and checking us out, but there is something about every Christian, there's a truth here for us, is that we were made to be fruitful, We were designed for fruitfulness, that actually multiplication, you think about one of the first things that is instructed for all of mankind is that be fruitful and multiply, that we're made to multiply. I remember um, growing up in uh, in the small town that I was from in England. And this church was uh, celebrating their anniversary that they'd had in this building for, I can't remember how many years. You know it's a long time in England because we just, you know, we've been going a long time. But there, is, uh, there was this big celebration of how many years. And it was like that the church has not multiplied and grown out of this place. It's probably not a celebration. That's not the way that we would see it. It's great to have a place. But actually, the church should be fruitful. It should be growing and multiplying. And healthy things grow. That is a truth for all Christians, is that if we're healthy, we grow. If the church is healthy, it should be multiplying and growing. And so if things are just the same year on year, what's, what's not right there? Because that's the design that God has given us. So w- w- what Jesus says is you will bear much fruit. Amen? We want to see a bearing of fruit in this city. We want to see a bearing of fruit through our church. And God has been so faithful to us, particularly over this last year. We have seen much fruit. Like God has done some amazing things. And a lot of us have seen it with our own eyes. It's been transformative. It's been impacting. It's been inspiring. It's been exciting what God has been doing. So we just want to get a few uh, celebrations in there. Yeah, the nice thing about a Vision Sunday is we get to bring you some news of what we believe God is leading us towards but it's also the perfect opportunity to just stop and take note, take take stock of what God has done so far this year. And so we want to celebrate some things with you. We want to celebrate some of the things that feel like huge milestones to us. And again, if this is your first time in our church, we haven't been a church that's been able to bear much fruit all the way through our journey. In recent days, in recent months, God's really turned up the fruit bearing. And so we want to celebrate it. We want to show God our gratitude by celebrating the incredible ways that he's answered our prayers. Just to give you some context, when we first moved to this country five years ago, uh, we had our four children and there were two other children in the whole church. That was the kids ministry. That was it. Those six kids were kids. That was, they were all in one room. They did all the same craft. They did all the same thing because there's six of them. But we just recently got to celebrate 12 baby dedications in this church, 12 families deciding or 12 children whose parents decided, I want to raise my children in the house of God. And there's lots more to come. We have had so much fun seeing families walk through our doors over the last few months. We've seen so, had so much fun seeing those kids' areas grow. And what I love about you guys is you take that commandment to be fruitful and multiply so seriously. And there are new babies coming into the church all the time. And we're seeing them get dedicated, get raised up in the ways of God. So we're celebrating that. It's amazing. Absolutely. And we've seen people going from death to life through baptism as well. So through the last nine months, we've seen 22 baptisms, which has just been amazing. It's been so encouraging to see. It has. It's been amazing watching people take those steps towards Jesus. We've also been able to expand in a new area, launching Freedom Youth in the last few months, which has been great. We are believing great things for our middle schoolers, for our high schoolers. Thank you so much to all of you guys who serve in that area, because I believe that this is just the start. This kind of summertime program that we're launching now is just the start of what will become something significant in the lives of our teenagers as they come to know Jesus. 
Absolutely. It's, um, it's amazing to see what God has done through that, isn't it? It's, uh, we have prayed some prayers uh, for, the, for our young people, and so seeing them come together is awesome. Um, so we then, we've also, we've done Academy, and uh, we've been launched our Academy program. We've just had a bunch of people that are just finishing up doing Academy, but now we're going to be transitioning to our two days a week, our what we call um, Residential Academy, where you spend a whole year focusing on that, and that's launching in September, which is super excited about. So we've seen a lot of acceleration and growth through that, but also we've seen it through Growth Track too. Yes, it's been incredible seeing what God has done through Growth Track. I believe 140 people, just over 140 people have now done Growth Track across our 915 and our 1115 services. You might see some new people wearing lanyards. Maybe this is your first month serving in the life of our church. Guys, Growth Track, it has been phenomenal to just see people come in, come and hear about the vision and decide off the back of that time together. I want to be a part of this. I want to come and get involved and, and be a part of this vision, be a part of this family. So that's been such a tremendous blessing to see Growth Track growing month on month. Absolutely. So while I think about the fruitfulness over this past year, it's been incredible. We went on this journey of really starting the church in 2019. And then for a number of you guys that have been here, you'll know our story where we have gone from uh, starting in downtown Raleigh, then going through COVID and doing house churches and church online, and then sh uh, shifting to a community center. Then we got this place, an old nightclub. We started converting it. We had all kinds of problems with uh, permissions and permits and things we, we just didn't understand as foreigners. It's like, well, we were just getting these things wrong. And, uh, and so we, uh, but we finally got into our space and we were able to launch it in September last year, which, uh, which re really was our first time we were able to publicly open this church. And it was amazing what God did. Since that point, so since September, we have seen a 300% growth. We've seen 116 salvations since September. 116 people saying, I want to choose Jesus, giving their lives to him. Just so amazing what God has done through that time. So you talk about fruitfulness. Um, you know, we talked a lot in freedom over the last few years. Like, we want to double. We've got a heart that's doubled. And God was like, I'm going to quadruple you instead. So um, that has been quite amazing to see what God's done through all of that. So, guys, that has been an amazing last nine months. And I remember when we got this building and we were meeting in this corner here, there was about 70 of us. Actually, there was less than that at that point. There was about 40, 40 adults, I think there were. And we were, um, we were excited about what God was doing. We built this stage and it was bigger than the meeting space that we were currently in. So we were like, it felt ridiculous. It's like, this is, yes, this is getting a bit much. I don't know if we can actually get on that thing. Um, and, uh, and so we got this vision for the church to grow and multiply and expand. And we weren't filling the room once. And we said, what if we did two services? What if we believed that God could do something here that would be radically fruitful, amazingly fruitful? And so we started getting this faith. And when we had originally planned for the building, we were thinking of going from 40, 50 uh, you know, to, to 80. Get, imagine if we get over 100 one day. Imagine if we could get to 120, you know, and we designed our space for that. So we designed our children's spaces, our cafe space, uh, and that's what we had in mind. But then God did this amazing thing where we quadrupled uh, in the last nine months, and so it's presented a whole load of problems uh, that, to our way. You may have noticed, uh, if you've been coming to our church, for a little while, some of these challenges. One of them is around this space that we've got. So this is our beautiful parking lot. Uh, if you have the privilege of ever parking in our dirt parking lot, which uh, don't tell anyone, but we don't actually own that. It's owned by the city, but they don't use it. So we're just using it. Um, so just keep it our secret, okay? And, uh, and so sometimes we've had people trying to park in there and navigate park in there, trying to get out again. And, uh, and not having enough spaces in our main lot. And it's been a challenge because, you know, for a lot of us that are the bought-in uh, people that have gone on this journey with our church, you know, you're ready to park in the mud for us. And I thank you for it. But when you're kind of looking around for a church and you think maybe we should try that place for the first time, and then you get your car stuck in the muddy puddle um, or have to kind of get your dress dirty as you go through the, our mud lot, it's not a great first impression. 
And so there's something that that's been the challenge for us. The other is um, the way that our kids' space has grown has been amazing. The amount of children we've seen coming in, families. We're so grateful for every child and every family that comes here. But it has then caused this challenge as well with, oh man, our spaces were not designed for this in mind. So we've been pressed here. And even when we've had um, Easter or our baptism Sunday, even our space in here as well has been pressed. We've been pressed for space. And so we've had this challenge of space. And we've been thinking, what are we going to do? And we started talking about, do we add a third service? Would that create more space? We were even praying about you know, we've got these units here that we're in right now, but we're like, hey, maybe God, if you uh, bless the businesses next door, maybe we could take some of their uh, space as well. Amen. Just kick them out on the slide. Um, and, uh, and so we were asking these questions and wondering, well, God, what would we do? But it would still give us the same problems with parking and also where we are as well, situated in the city. Um, you know, there's just something about turning off that road, isn't there? Past the altar glass place. Is there a church here? I know you've all thought that as you came here for the first time. And you found us in the corner here. Um, but there it is. It's almost a little hidden. And so, guys, we started asking this question about what are we going to do. And we went back to these verses in John 15. And the picture that God gave me was, uh, was this. Have you ever had a plant in your house that needed repotting? And it's like, you take it out, and it's like, oh, I should have done this a while ago. It's like there's roots everywhere. You can see the plant's got all this potential to grow, and it's not got the space to do it. And so God started showing me this picture of our church and saying, this is what it's like for you guys right now. And we had people, and there were a bunch of people here that already, you know what we're going to share today. Because you came in in the, in the fall, and you were telling me, Hey, Josh, what's this wall made of? Can we get that down? I thought you had fire regulation concerns. I was like, no, don't worry. It's all safe. We did the proper things. Everything's to regulation. But people were already coming in here for the first time and saying, we need more space here. We need, because what God wants to do in us and through us as a people. And so we guys, we need to be repotted. We need to be repotted. So guys, our Freedom Church Sunday experience, we are on the move. We're going to be moving our Sunday experience. We're going to be going to a new venue on Sundays. So we're really excited about this. We've been kind of working on it, praying over it over the last couple of months. And we want to share with you that we are going to be going to Millbrook High School. So, guys, we are going to Millbrook High School. We're going to be loading in, loading out. It's going to be a totally different church experience for us. But we are so excited. This is a picture of the space that we've got, okay? And it's got 555 capacity. So, we've got huge amounts of space for um, our main uh, worship space. It's incredible in there. Um, in fact, I think I've got another picture of it just here. So we've got this amazing space here that we can be, um, we can come and see our church grow, see our church be fruitful to its full potential. But just a couple of other points on this is that we've got rooms for kids. There's, there's classrooms on classrooms where we can make our own, where we can come and say, rather than being cramped or kind of, shut, and, I, and just shout out to our kids volunteers. You guys are amazing. And what our kids team have done with the spaces that we've had, they've made it work. You know, right out there today, and it's just a shout out to Julie, who went and made um, stuff for our kids today doing, uh, they, they're acting out the Good Samaritan, and they've got costumes. So we just walked past, and Jesse's dressed as the Good Samaritan, our son out there, and just bringing it to life because our teams have worked so hard to make it an amazing experience for our children. And just God bless you guys for all that you've done. But I think about how when we go into this space and we can make it in an even greater environment where there's more space for them to run around and play and have a great Sunday, how much more then our church is going to flourish in this area. It's going to be amazing. We're just seven minutes from our current location. So it's close by. Um, so you've got a map here. Look, if you don't know where, this is where we are. So Freedom Church Raleigh is here. Millbrook um, High School is just there. But the other great thing about this is that we also 
um, have great visibility. You know, there's something around. People know where this is in this area. Uh, also, it can be seen from the road. There's the kind of no kind of looking past the trees. Where is that church? Um, you know, we've got a great visibility to where our church is going to be in this school. And do you want to add on that, Rose? I'm just, I think that, uh, honestly, you know, I'm so excited about what it is that we're being able to step into because we really did consider, do we go to three services? You know, we need to make space. I don't know how many of you guys uh, would have immediately jumped at the opportunity, but I know you guys are with us, so we would have made it work. But this feels like just a, a much more natural step for us. And in this step, there are so many positives, as Josh has been saying. People know this place. It's visible. It has great capacity. It has so much room for us to grow. And it really feels like us stepping into this fruitful call to the next level to produce even more fruit. We need to get some space for those roots to go in, and there is so much space over here. So we just feel very grateful the opportunities that God is bringing to our doorstep and for the way that we are, we know that we're going to be able to impact our city from this new spot. Absolutely. And so I want to come back to John uh, 15. So we're going to look at these verses now. And it says, um, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. And this is one of the things, as I was, I was thinking about all the fruitfulness that God's given us over this last year. It's been amazing what God's done. But do you know what uh, the gardener does? Is he cuts it to become more fruitful. And this is going to be a cut for us. This is going to be something of cutting away our familiarity. Some, some of us are used to perhaps our space here. And, and it's been an amazing blessing. We love this space that God gave us. Uh, but with the comfort of not having to set up and tear down. And for some of us have maybe been a part of church like that before. It's work. You know, I remember um, someone telling me that, you know, the way you spell revival is W-O-R-K. It's like you've got to put in the work if you want to see the harvest come. And that's what Jesus says. And he says, there's so much harvest. There's so much potential. But the workers are few. We need workers. But what does God do? He cuts back. And this is almost a cutting back of something we've had, which has been an incredible blessing for us as a church family. We've loved it. We've loved what uh, this space has meant for us. But actually, it's going to create more growth. Jesus prunes what grows. He doesn't just cut away what's not working. He actually cuts back so that it can be more fruitful. Yeah, and as we just consider that principle, we recognize that for us as a church family, there's something of convenience that's going to get pruned and cut back. There's something of even comfort in our, our way that church works right now. Things are going to change. There's a bit of pruning in that. But the pruning is always to increase the fruitfulness, and we believe God is about to do that in a powerful way. The next verse I want to share is uh, verses 7 to 8. It says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you would bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You know, one of the things we recognize through this scripture in John 15, and I highly recommend that you guys go away and have a look at this scripture this week, maybe pray over it, consider what God might be saying to you in this scripture. But one of the things that is very clear is that Jesus himself, he identifies himself as the vine. He says, I'm the sustaining part here. I'm the strength of this fruit bearing. I'm the place that all of that information comes from in order to bear fruit. You are the branches. The branches are designed to bear fruit. The fruit can't actually come directly out of the roots. It needs the vine. It needs the branches. But we are the fruit bearing part. However, we cannot do it without Jesus. He says, apart from you, you will not bear any fruit. Remain in me, abide in me, stay with me. I will remain in you and you remain in me. And that's where the fruit comes from. But we cannot do this without Jesus. And I just want to step in at this point and say, if you're thinking that we're presuming we're going to grow because we have more seats, that's not the case. If you're thinking that we maybe thought we needed a zip code change in order to grow, that is not what this is. This is Jesus leading us forward and saying, I desire for you to be more fruitful, but it will only happen if you remain in me. And so this is my call out to the church today is, guys, we can have the strategies, we can have the advertising, we can have the space and the spot in the city that's central. But unless we remain in Christ, we will not bear fruit. And so my ask for you guys and my call and my challenge to you guys is take this away and ask Jesus 
what he wants to do through your faith in this. We need to be those who are rooted evermore, leaning into the presence and the truth and the words of Christ like never before. And for us as a church, I, I set this challenge to a few people this week and a couple of the leaders that we were speaking to in preparation for this. But I want to echo the challenge through the whole church. If you call this church home, if we believe that we are about to grow in number, grow in discipleship, grow in fruit bearing, grow in decisions for Christ, grow in children coming into our building, we personally, as the people of the church, we need to grow in our love for and our desire for Jesus. Because he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So we could get some great ideas and we could move this down the road and we could set up there. But apart from Jesus, it will bear no fruit. We need to invite Jesus even more to be in our lives personally, to be leading us individually, and as a church to be speaking into what we're doing so that we can have great impact in this city. So I just want to encourage us individually right now, that vine is the source of all life. That vine is Christ. And for every one of us believing for fruit, maybe you have some people on your heart today. Maybe you consider some neighbors, some friends, some family members, and you think, I'd love them to meet Jesus. I'd love them to get baptized. I'd love them to come and find home in church. It begins with us pressing into Jesus, and everything else brings fruit from that relationship. Over to me again. Good. The next one, you're right, it is me again. The next one, verse 11, it says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. You know, as we read this scripture, it talks all about the love of God. Let my love be in you. Let your love be evident to all. We know that we're doing this because we love our city and we want to see them saved. We love the people that we came here for. We came around the world for this and we believe that there are people that Jesus is just waiting for us to connect into his church. But what we understand from this scripture is that there is joy in fruit bearing. There is such tremendous joy when we step into bearing fruit, when we step into being those that God will use to bring his kingdom to earth. It actually fulfills us in a way that lots of the other things that we pour our lives into can't fulfill us. Oh, lots of us are looking for joy in maybe in promotion, maybe in relationship. Maybe we're looking for joy in the hobbies and the extra things that we squeeze into our Saturdays. Those things are all good. But the true joy of God comes from bearing fruit, comes from partnering with God, stepping into our design that he has called us to and beginning to see him use our lives to change the lives of others. And we have seen lives changed in this church. It's been an amazing thing. The source of so much of our joy, the reason why so many of us turn up here at eight o'clock on a Sunday morning and set things out and get things ready, pour the drinks, prepare the kids' areas, is because we have experienced the joy of seeing lives changed. And we want to express and share with you today, if you've never been involved in that, we want to invite you to come and get involved in what our church is about to do, because we believe there is great joy in it for you as well. Yeah, and, and Jesus says this in uh, verse 13, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends, that love requires sacrifice. And for all of us that are going on to this journey, if you're part of this journey, and maybe, hey, again, like you're here for the first time, you could be a part of this journey. We would love that. We would love for you to come and do this with us. This is an opportunity to be a part of something I think that is going to impact this city. That's going to bring change that can impact your friends, your family, your neighborhood because of what God is going to do through this church for his glory. But it requires sacrifice. And there are perhaps things that we're going to, whether it's to give sacrificially with our time, with our energy, with our effort, that Jesus is talking about laying one down's life. And he's talking about it very literally. He's about to go to the cross and perhaps for us, it's going to be more inconvenient. There's going to be more that's required of us. Some of us are going to have to step up. But that's what love does. And so we just want to encourage every person as we head into this to remember the words of Jesus himself. This is what's required by love. It's sacrifice. Let's pay the price so we can see a difference for those that we love. Amen? Amen. So then um, in verses 16 to 7, it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. That's the fruit that we're after, isn't it? 
There's so many things that we can give our lives to, but we want to do it for the things that are going to last forever, the eternal things, the lives and the souls of people. This is the most important fruit. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. And we're asking for the city. We're asking for souls to be saved. We're going to be asking prayerfully for things to be um, transformed and changed through this ministry. That as we go and we repot, we get into this new place, that God is going to increase the fruitfulness again of what he's done. In fact, I believe that what we've seen so far is nothing to what we're about to see. Anyone else believe that here today? That God's going to do more that there's going to be increase, that there is going to be even greater fruitfulness as we go and put ourselves in this new place. But we're asking for the seed, and we're asking you to ask with us. We're going to be doing later this year, we're going to do 21 days of prayer, where we're going to be praying and preparing the way, because we don't believe that this is just, a, like as Rose said, a practical change. This is a spiritual thing that God wants to do, and we're going to be praying for our city uh, in a great way. We're going to be doing that later on. But what really motivates us in all of that is the lives changed. You know, we're going to keep coming back to it. We've seen decisions. We've seen salvations. We've seen baptisms. We've seen lives change. And some of these people up on this screen, we maybe didn't know that well a couple of months ago. But we are seeing people come in and find a place for themselves in the church. And it's the greatest blessing. It really is the greatest blessing. So we want to continue to see that. We want to make space for even more of that to happen. We want to ask God to multiply what it is that he's doing in this church. But what we know about some of you guys in this room is that off the back of this information, you might be excited, you might have questions, you might be wondering, but what about this and how does this work? So we're just going to answer a couple of questions for you before we finish up today. Maybe you're wondering, what about our current building? What is going to happen to this place? Because... When we moved into this place, it was a mess, okay? It used to be a nightclub, it was some sticky floors, it was some nasty corners, it was some interesting wall art. And we have done a lot to turn this place around and make it home. We thought it would be home for a lot longer than it has been on our Sundays. It's just really kind of served us nine months and we're looking to repot. So what's gonna happen to this space? Well, if you're asking that question, the answer is we're gonna keep this space and it is gonna continue to be our church home for everything that's not a Sunday. This is where we're gonna do our she nights, where we're gonna do our barbarians nights. We'll have worship nights in this place. We'll get together for prayer here. We're gonna take those kids' spaces. We're gonna turn them into office spaces where we can work through the week and make things happen for the life of this church. We also just this Friday night launched our academy applications. We are taking applications for our leadership school the academy right up until the end of this month and this is going to be the academy building we're going to turn some of this space around a little bit we're going to turn it into classrooms and learning environments so that we can raise up a new generation of leaders in this space we love this building and we are going to make it as valuable and as as kind of working for us as we possibly can alongside this time so sundays will be in millbrook but everything else in the life of church will be here growth track we're going to make it work we're going to use it well we love this space and we want to be good stewards of it so you might be then asking, how many services will we do? You know, we've got capacity now for 500 odd people, and that's just adults. Um, but we are still going to do two services. Ooh. So it's like if we all sat in there for both of our services together right now, we would be swallowed up in there uh, in just one. But actually, we're going to believe for two. We're going to, uh, we'll use, um, you know, some ways to kind of make the space smaller when we need to. But actually, we believe that there's something great about being able to do two services. So people who are serving uh, in our children can come and be in one and then serve in the other and for other areas too. Uh, but it also gives people other options to be able to come to different services. And so we believe that actually we're going to continue doing that. And again, if you'd said to us um, just over a year ago about doing two services, it would have really seemed a big stretch of faith. Um, and God's done it over this last year it's been amazing and so we want to continue to have that big faith in this church you know we've got one of our principles is punching above our weight is that we're going to go and we're like we got this david spirit in us to say we're going to take down that giant it might seem intimidating but actually we're going to believe that god's going to fill those spaces and i think of all the people that have joined us over this last year i've loved seeing you find family here and find community here and there are so many other friends to come There are so many other people that are going to be filling our seats and finding a home and community within this church, having their lives saved 
and change through this church. And they're waiting for us, guys. They're waiting for us at our next place. Yeah. So you might be wondering, what's the timeline? When does this all happen? Would you like to know when are we doing this move and making this kind of big shift? Well, we're actually going to take the summer through here this in this building on a Sunday. But at the end of August, we'll have our last Sunday here at 2013 New Hope Church Road. That's what that means. Um, and then we're going to take two Sundays to rehearse in our new space. Now, maybe we'll see guests come into that. Maybe we'll see new faces. That's okay. But really, those two Sundays, the purpose of those is to get familiar with that new space. How does kids set up work? How does production work? How are we going to be standing in the right places to park the cars and host the guests and give them that VIP experience? It's got some good parking. Gonna, it's got some oh. lovely parking. Thank goodness. No wheel spinning in the mud for you guys anymore. Let's go greet It's going to be great. And then we are going to open up officially on the 15th of September. September 15th is going to become our kind of big open doors welcome to the city. And we're so excited for that. It's almost exactly a year after we yeah. uh, launched here. So wow. it's just quite amazing, the yeah. timing of it. And, uh, and I know for some of you guys, you know, that weren't here for that, you're like, oh, man, you know, it sounds like it was a great... Hey, you're going to be a part of this one, Dan. Yes. It's like, Not you're going to be a part of this. And so... Uh, it's going to be a great journey. Just a quick shout out on the school as well. Um, at heart, it's not just to use the school as a venue, it's to partner with the school. We want to love on those students. We want to support the school where we can. Um, so we're really excited about that partnership. We're already in conversations with the principal. We signed the contract this week for the school. So that was awesome. But you might be asking, uh, what needs do we have? Okay, so, okay, there's a lot here. And honestly, a lot is required. Um, first, of, uh, above anything, as we said, we need prayer. We're going to need prayer into this. We're going to need faith. We're going to need you to believe with us what God will do. Uh, and so first and foremost, that's what we're going we're gonna to be asking everybody. Pray with us. Pr start praying now. But also, we've got our 21 days of prayer that's going to be happening late August into September as we open. Yeah, we also are ever obviously going to have need to expand what we're able to do in terms of serving. And so just a quick shout out, if you've never done growth track, which is our kind of uh, welcome to the church experience, then um, you can sign up for our July one and come and see how you can get involved in a practical way. Because we are going to need people to serve in spaces that will help the, our guests find exactly where they need to be. We're going to need people who are directing through the hallways with a wave and a smile. We're going to need people who are ready to pray with our guests as they come in and maybe experience something that they've never experienced before. We have so many areas of need. And, you know, if you call this church home, if you consider this to be your spiritual home and you're excited to come with us, I want to ask you, come with us, not just as one who will come and be involved in that space on a Sunday, but come with us as one who'll come and be on team, who'll come and help get involved and, and make things happen, put things in the right place, put smiles in the right place, put drinks in the right hands, put answers in the right ears, all of those things and more we need. And so we're going to do growth track in July. Our, our growth track July is likely to be a kind of a, a shortened one because of um, 4th of July weekend. And Independence so, Day. Independence Day. Thank you. We're not like, so good on that, that one, guys. I don't know why. It just won't stick in the mind. Why is that? I Did don't know. you see me physically look for help? I was like, I didn't grow up with that one, but I enjoy it. Um, we, uh, you know, we're going to have a condensed growth track, just a two-part growth track in July. And if you have not done growth track yet, you can head out of this space. You can sign up at our Connect Point, and they would love to email you information about how you can come along this July and come and find out how to get involved in church. I think sometimes when you come along and you see, like, our, our team's do an amazing job, you can think, oh, everything's covered. They don't need me. Um, guys, we're going to need you. We are going to need more more uh, muscle, more help, more prayer, more effort, more energy, more kids workers. We're going to need help. So um, we should encourage you. If you've been thinking that to now, it's not true. We do need you. Get get involved. Um, get prepared. And then lastly, um, of, we're, if we're keeping this space as is and we're using it still for worship practices, and we, we're going to need to keep all that's here ready to go. But what that means is for all the stuff that we need going into school and doing uh, church like this, we're going to need money. And, um, and so we have this huge financial need. I reckon we probably need around $200,000 in about 12 weeks. Um, so we've got this huge need. And for us, you know, this has not been something I've been intimidated by or worried by. But, you know, 
well, as we did this overflow series, we had already scheduled and planned that before uh, we knew that we were going to do this. This has been just since um, early, early, it was late April um, that we decided this. And it was the week before that that we had booked this series in to do. So I just want to tell you that that was not an intention, but I believe that God has prepared us for where he's taking us. And so we're doing a giving uh, campaign through this month. And we're going to be asking everybody to get involved in this. And the way that we're doing it is that we've got 500 envelopes um, prepared. And they're all out there in the cafe. You're going to see them um, on the wall, hopefully, if our team's been able to, to pull it off while we're in here. And, um, and each one of them has got a number. And each number corresponds to the amount of dollars that you would like to contribute. Okay, so we've got one to 500 and you've probably worked out if you've been attended both services. We do not have 500 people in this church. So we might need you to do more than one if you're able. Um, but what I love about this idea is that it also allows us for anyone with whatever you have, if you can give $5, you can take that $5 envelope. If you can take six of the ones that are close to 500, you can do that. You know, there is, there is something about every person, whether you're a teenager, a child, whether you're someone who has a job, who doesn't, you can get involved in this campaign and contribute something to it. And, um, and I've got here the number 265 on this envelope because I was telling our friends uh, in South Africa that we've got a church, Freedom Church in Cape Town. We're a part of churches uh, across the world called Freedom Church. We're a family of churches and we're in a relationship. We, we connect and we love each other. We pray for each other. And he messaged me, the pastor, last night and said, we want to give the first envelope. So we want, we want the 265 envelope. I want to tell you guys that there's a church in Africa, in South Africa, that is already giving because they believe in what God wants to do here in Raleigh, North Carolina. They may never come here. They may never get to see the people, but they've already contributed that first $265. So we are going to be taking this offering collectively together as a church at the end of this month, okay? So we, you can come and get the envelopes. Um, today you can come and get some. You can get some in the weeks that follow. But they will be then taken. We'll come and give that offering together. We'll come and bring those envelopes. You can do it online. You can do it through a check or cash. But the, with the actual kind of thing of coming and bringing back the envelope, of coming significantly, bringing that offering to God, we'll be doing that at the end of June, 30th of June, okay? So um, we're so excited about what God is about to do. Um, yeah, we've, have we got the video, guys, ready to go there? No? Um, Tevin, are you able to get that prophetic video that we had from the other night? See if you can find it. Um, I, I, uh, we, we had someone here who uh, is a good friend of ours, and they were, um, they were visiting our Academy Plus students, and they're prophetic. They have a gift where they can hear from God and speak out what he's saying over people. It's really powerful. It's really profound. And I've known the guy for over 30 years. That, you know, so I've known him as a kid. I've known him as a teenager, as a mar married man, uh, as a pastor. And I've seen the things that He's, uh, that he speaks come out and come to pass. And he came to speak over our, um, over our Academy Plus guys. He lives here in North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And he starts speaking over one of our students, Michaela. And he starts speaking not just over Michaela, but he starts speaking over Freedom Church here in Raleigh. And I would love to. I don't know if we found it. We've got it. Oh, my gosh. You guys are good. Um, I forgot to ask them about this, didn't I? Uh, so now I just made them scrabble and they pulled it off. Um, but we are, uh, we're going to show you this video and you just listen to what Clem starts speaking at. He doesn't know anything about what we're about to do, but listen to what he starts saying. Uh, systems of outreach for Freedom Church. Mm. I know you're kind of tucked away in this little corner of this warehouse district here. And people are not just going to just pull in on Sunday morning just because they see a flag out there, but you're going to really help get the name out, get the, the heart of freedom out, something that has to do with reaching young people. And I mean, I mean, you might even get into a school 
God might give you access to a school where you can just be the, you can be kind of the, the spokesperson. You can be the face of Freedom Church for a school. And they're going to, they're going to really trust you. And you're going to, you're going to kind of just say, how can we help you? How can we serve you? What can we do for you? And so you're going to just begin to slowly win the hearts of the skeptical, uh, uh, you know, secular uh, society by just being Jesus, by just being we're here to serve. How can we serve you? You want to be great in God's kingdom? The Bible says, learn to be the servant of all. So you're going to serve the servants of all. Teachers, uh, principals, all those. They serve families every day by teaching their kids. And you're going to go in and serve them. And as you do that, you're going to just win their hearts with Amen. kindness. You're going to win their hearts like we care about teachers. We care about our schools. We care. And suddenly, you're going to help build a bridge between what people right. say, well, that's secular and that's yeah. of the world, and then we're Christians and we're of God, and we don't yeah. we don't like to, you know, mingle. And yeah. no, you're going to mingle. <laughs> you're going to meddle. Wow. You're going to build bridges yeah. into the places good. of skepticism and wow. where people have the wrong idea of what a church is or what Christians wow. are. And you're yeah. just going to say, yeah. we just want to help you. How can we help you? Yeah. And God's going to. Yeah. And I just feel like you guys are going to have a special. Uh, kind of a, an anointing and a calling and a favor to minister to single moms wow. and they're going to be your best friend they're going to be your evangelists they're going to be your your marketers they're going to say all i know is that church took care of me they gave me a gift card they took got me some groceries they helped my kids and wow you're going to build an army of advertisers they are just going to say we love that church before they even get here we just love what they do and then oh you'll win them and they'll start coming in for prayer, and they'll bring their kids. And, yeah, Josh, you're going to need so much more room for kids. <laughs> I don't know how God's going to do it, but Amen. you're going to you're gonna have to believe God for way more space somewhere, sometime. But this wow. is good for now. But you know what? Because you're going to have an explosive kids ministry. Because God's just going to touch children. And God's going to see your heart for the next Amen. generation. And you know what? God just says, I've got a big budget. So believe God for the big budget to reach. As long as your heart is to reach, God says, I'll keep funneling funds and resources in. And, you know, believe big, Josh, for a building. Believe for a bigger space. And I just, I, I believe not only just a bigger space, but a visible space. I see a lot of glass. Uh, I just think that God's going to give you a place with a lot of glass so people can literally see what you're doing. And almost like turn heads. You're going to be in a turn head situation where people just can't help but turn their head and yeah. just kind of gaze for a minute like what's going on over there what is that so God wants to establish you God wants to showcase you because you're going to love people because it's all about well this is this is a <laughs> this is like the love station <laughs> some call it a church it's a love station they love people they love kids they love unwed and, and, and single moms and, and struggling moms and just this heart for mothers are just going to just, the big arms of Freedom Church are going to go around the community and start loving, 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 loving. And those are the arms of Jesus. Come on. How awesome is that? So us knowing this was um, not this Friday, the Friday before, and us knowing, wow, we're about to tell the whole church about this. This is so cool that, we, that God has given us a school. Um, so guys, we are so excited, but it's all about people. That's why we're so motivated. That's why we're so believing for this. That's why we're going to come and just see what God is going to do, because we believe that there are great days ahead for our city, for people, for our friends, for our family, for our neighborhoods, the people that have been in darkness. And I cannot tell you how many stories we have over this past year of people that have been through such dark times so lonely, so broken, and God has brought healing, restoration, wholeness. It has been a miraculous and beautiful thing. 